Okay, so changes in membrane potential can be used as a way of signaling or can be used by your neurons for various reasons. So one of these changes in membrane potentials, we call them a local potential. Okay, so LP, local potential, is a small change in membrane potential that remains locally, okay? That stays local, meaning where, where it happens, that where, that's where it, 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 it shows up and doesn't travel. So it's called a local potential, also called a graded potential, LP or GP. Now, some features, properties of local potential. One, local potentials are graded. This means that, let's say you, you're here at a negative 70 millivolts, and you, you get a stimulus comes in, the change may be this big. But if, you, but if you get a bigger stimulus coming in, the change can be this big, okay? So the size of the change is based on how big the stimulus gets. Okay, so it's a greater meaning that size changes with size of stimulus. So it's responsible, so it's graded in that, in, in that sense. Another property of local potential, potentials is that they are decremental. Decremental, meaning that let's say here is your um, soma. Okay. But the local potentials tend to happen only on dendrites and soma. Okay. So let's go here. So let's just say here, something happens here. That, that's, that's, that's your stimulus. So right away in this area, the, the change will be, will be this big. But as, that, as the ions spread away from where they started in, then they will create a smaller and smaller change as they spread away. So, so as the signal spreads away from where it started, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So, so it decays. It decays over a distance away from where it started. So decremental, meaning that this signal will not reach down here. It will, it will die out, die out before it gets it, gets there. And that's why it's called local. It cannot spread too far because it's, it, it's decremental. It decays before it can get, get too far from where it started. Another feature of these is that they are reversible. So they are reversible, meaning they start, it goes up, and they come back and rest again. Okay, so change is transient or quick or you know, change can, the change can be undone. Change can be undone. It goes up and it comes down. Reversible changes there. And they can also be excitatory changes or inhibitory changes. Let's try that one. So here, the change can be this way or this way. So when it changed, so again, let's make, make this negative 70, make this maybe negative 30, make here negative 90. So when a change goes this way, become more positive, that's called an excitatory change. When a change becomes more negative, like this, that's called an inhibitory change. So LPs are allowed to change either way, more positive or more negative. And you see later on why, why that, that's of, of some value. So those, so those are all the features of, of local potential. They're local, they decay, they're graded, they can be uh, reversed, and they can be in a, in, a, in a depolarizing way or a way that is repolarizing or hyperpolarizing, away from, from, from RMP. Okay, let's look at action potentials, another form of signals that's based on changes in membrane member potentials. Okay, 
today. So action potentials. Let me see how much time is on this recording. I don't want it to be too long. Sorry, so we're good. So action potentials are the other forms of memory potentials that is used this time for long distance signaling. So, so APs are large changes in the memory potential and they are triggered by local potentials and they're used for signaling or long distance communication between, between neurons. So let's see how it works. So the action potential has uh, four phases to it. Okay, so, go. so it's the phases of an action potential. Phases of the action potential. So we begin here at negative centimillivolts. Here it is, you're resting. It then goes up to about negative 55 millivolts and then shoots up to about plus 35 millivolts and then returns back down. And then on the shoots and then come back that way. So this is your R and P value of negative 70. Okay, so you have phase, it's called phase one, one, two, three, four, and five. All right, so one, it's called reaching threshold. So threshold is here, this, this value is threshold, just so you know. So here, local potentials that may happen, you know, all over the, all over the soma or dendrites spread to the trigger zone. Now, remember the trigger zone is with, with so remember, this is your neuron, this part, so in here is myelin, myelin, myelin. This part here is called your trigger zone. So an AP, so, so, you, so you, your local potentials here must spread over, spread to get to here. They're trying to get to your trigger zone. So when they spread to your trigger zone to cause the membrane potential to change to negative, 55 millivolts, meaning at some point these LPs as they spread will cause ions to enter the cell that will slowly drift the MP, the memory potential, up to the threshold. Okay, so, so, so LPs, so, so, so this is the job of LPs, bringing you, you up to the threshold. Then at threshold, at, so, so phase two here, is called the depolarization phase. Okay, so here we go. So at threshold, okay, voltage gated sodium, which is all voltage gated sodium channels in the trigger zone basically open. Open to let Na plus rush into the cell. And as Na rushes in, this will cause the MP to change, to have, to have, a, to have an upshoot. So this causes the depot phase, the depolarization phase, that, that's two. So here, 
This is caused by the influx, the in of sodium ions. And they enter through voltage gated any channels. Then phase three is called repolarization phase. So here, so at around plus 35 millivolts, plus 35 millivolts. So we go, so at plus 35 millivolts, your NA, your voltage gated NA gates or channels inactivate. And when they inactivate, NA can't move, doesn't, does, does not move into the cell anymore. And also at plus 35, also at plus 35 millivolts, voltage gated potassium channels open to let potassium leave the cell. And this creates the repo phase. So here, as potassium leaves the cell, K is, is, is the Na in, is K plus out. As it leaves the cell, the membrane potential comes back to R and P. This creates the repo phase. So fresh weakened threshold, depot, repo, and now this is phase four. So in phase four, here that is your hyperpolarization phase. Okay, this one. So here, at RMP, so once you get back to RMP, your voltage-gated potassium channels close slowly, which allows extra potassium ions to leave this creates the undershoot so this creates the high per polariz hyperpolarization phase so this part here is due to extra, extra K plus out. Causes your hyperpolarization phase. And then eventually the gates close. And when they close, then your sodium potassium pump, among other channels, will, will, will return you back up to RMP. Okay, so phase five, Phase five, the return to RMP, well, what I call it there. That, so, so you say eventually your voltage gated K plus channels close and your sodium potassium pump returns um, MP to RMP. That is phase five. Okay. And so here, this is due to sodium potassium pump. Okay. All right, so those, so those are the phases of the action potential, okay?
Let me quickly summarize again and we'll, we'll, we'll dig in some more. So, at the potential, you start off at, at negative 70, threshold, depot, repo on the sheet. Okay, again, base one is due to local potentials. Bring, bring, bring the threshold, it's negative, here's negative 70, it's the RMP value, RMP. Threshold here is at negative 55 millivolts. And then here in phase two, you have voltage gated NA channels. Let NA into the cell. That creates your depot phase. So that plus 35 here at plus 35 millivolts. Here, your voltage gated sodium channels inactivate and your voltage gated potassium channels open. And so they create this phase here. So phase three, your repo phase is due to Voltage gated K plus channels being open and let K plus out. In phase three, here, phase four, sorry, that's your phase of hyperpolarization is due to extra K plus out through voltage gated potassium channels and then you return back to your RMP by using your sodium potassium pump, which is the pump that pumps out three sodium and brings, brings in two potassium. So, 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 that, so that imbalance will eventually make the memory potential back to, to, to becoming, back, back to, to its RMP value. Okay, you're trying to, by here to here now, just by pushing out three pluses and bringing in one negative, you, I'm sorry, bring in two, sorry, push out three positives and bring in two positives, then you will, in a net way, return the MP back up in a more positive way towards RMP. Okay, let's pause there.